Well, Grant Gordon, thanks for doing it show business. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Latif. How you doing, man? Doing pretty good. good. It was great to see you at Jetpack. Likewise. I, I like Jetpack. It feels like a taste of home. How like, so? It's just like... You were, you were raised in a Russian uh, bar. I was, actually. <laughs> no, yeah. I wish. No, um, just like in terms of the pre-pandemic life. Like oh, it yeah, was a sure. staple show. Mm -hmm. Bar Lubitsch was kind of like always a touch point sure. in doing shows around town. Yeah. And just going back there is like a sense of normalcy. A little sliver of it. Yeah. But you also notice how much isn't normal by that too, right? Like, yeah. I mean, one comic like just left because they weren't checking vaccinations or whatever. So, <clears throat> yeah. So, you know. Oh, little, I didn't know that. Yeah, not everything is, you know, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it is nice to, to get a little taste of it. Well, I guess we're going full vax next week, so everywhere. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I heard or something. I don't know. That was a rumor. I can't, but uh, I so it's going to be universal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you had such a great set, like oh, uh, thank that you. pizza bit. Oh. And then when I thought it was over and then you hit him with the <laughs> hut, I was like, this is out of here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. That was that, that, that hut part was a new part on it. That okay. was like trying, because I think... I mean, I'm sure you get this as a comic. It's like when you're coming out of like not doing sets for a long time, it's like, well, I mean, I have new stuff, but it's like, I don't know. It makes you redo old stuff. Like, yeah. I feel like I'm bringing old stuff back into the lab and I'm like, well, maybe there's more meat on this bone and stuff like that. Because I know part of it works, right? So I might as well at least be Absolutely, able to coast yeah. on something I can rely on and then hopefully maybe build something. So Yeah, I've been doing that like stuff that I was like, let me revisit this and mm -hmm. update it and make it a new thing. Right. So it's fresh. And I just feel better about it. Yes. It makes you like, oh, feel okay, like doing it. Yeah, yeah it's part of it's for me, but totally. also it's like, just can it be better? Mm -hmm. And I have a couple that's like, I've been doing it the old way so long, it's hard for me to change it, even though I want to. Oh yeah, sure, that happens. Yeah, it get they become so rote that it's just like, uh, I don't even know why it's funny anymore. I just say the words and I know I yeah. stop and then there's laughs, so. Yeah. Or I have one part and one that's like, whatever reason is just not funny anymore. <laughs> and I don't know if it's because I'm doing it differently or right. life is different. And I can't bring myself to change it. Like I just, every time I, I, I'm just, it's so finished in my mind that I yeah. can't alter it. So maybe I just throw it out. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But we had a good conversation there about, uh, you doing a lot of commercials. Mm -hmm. I've never had anyone on who's done a lot of commercial oh, work. Really? So I'd love to talk about that and okay. see, you know, how you got into it and what sure. the trials and tri tribulations of it are. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, listen, I, I, I got into it. When in New York, I started as a comedian in New York, and uh, I just remember seeing like some other comics on TV back in the day, and just kind of being like, "Well, that seems pretty doable." Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, that yeah. seems like. I mean, I think most, I think most things I've ever done, or most things a lot of comics do, is like that. You know, it's like, yeah, totally. If you're afraid to try comedy, go to an open mic, and I guarantee someone up there will be so bad that you'll be like, "Well, that's what I did. I went to one I watched, <laughs> and I was like, I could do this. I can be better. I'm better than that guy." <laughs> you know, like yeah. yeah. So it wasn't like I'm better than, but it was at least I yeah. can do this. So I took a uh, I took a class in, right. in commercial acting. Uh, the agents came on the last night. I guess it's sort of a Cinderella story for me because the agent contacted me and liked what I had done and and uh, started auditioning. And you know I I, I I've been working semi consistently. I wouldn't I, you know, but uh, I've booked some things. Yeah, that. some big ones like Progressive. Mm -hmm. Just that's that alone is a big one, mm -hmm. and uh, Boost Mobile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I got it. That happened to me. Like I did a show and a commercial agent saw me. He's like, oh, you got a universal kind of yeah. multi-ethnic look. Ethnic ambiguous. Yeah. yeah it's ethnically the ambiguous. Yeah, so you yeah, could yeah. probably well, I mean, get look something. at this. We, this could be me just as much as I think it is. Yeah. you. I, I actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's more I me. just didn't have a chance to update the name, but it is uh, actually you. Um, it's like me from two years ago. But uh, from Ramin Nazer, shout out to Ramin Nazer. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. He made that when I did his podcast. Oh, he that's makes cool. one for each guest. Oh, that's awesome. And I was like, can I use that? Because I love it. And he's like, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he's great. Um, yeah, he's awesome. Uh, let me just mute that. Sure. But um, yeah, so I got an agent. I, I, I personally haven't been too active about it. Mm -hmm. And coming from experience, like you start to get all those breakdowns. Sure. Your inbox is flooded with this, this, and that. Do you go for everything? Are you guys selective? Like, how do you discern what you should go for? Mm, I mean, I'll leave it up to my agent at this okay. point. So he um, just sends you, he's like, this is a good one. No, he just sends me an audition. I mean, he just sends me a, a booked a time. You yeah. Know? yeah. Um, I have gone union uh, and I am, you know, I'm, I'm stalwart about being union. I mean, you being, um, Union actually kind of saved my butt uh, with the, I was doing another campaign for, for Boost and uh, we managed to flip that whole production to a union production. Oh. Yes. Look at you. Yeah. So that, um, yeah, that was a big thing. That was a big thing. And, and, and because of the existence of the union, 
that was able to happen and, and sort of felt like, okay, now it, this is what this should be. You know? Yeah, totally. Because there, there's, there's t- it's tough because, you know, you're like, people see you on TV all the time and they think like, oh man, you're killing it. You know, you must be, you must be loaded. Yeah. Uh, and it's like really hard to like, you don't want to like, you don't want to just piss on everyone who says great, like is happy. People are happy for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm you don't want to be like, you don't yeah. want to be like, let me tell you why you shouldn't be. You know, yeah, but like, yeah. I, like I did that about a hundred times before. I'm like, I can't, I just need to pretend that I, right. that this is, that I am making a lot of money or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. because I, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just like, I'm just like, I'd like an angry guy, you know? Right, right, and right. I'm like, I, I don't want to be this guy. So it's like Rick Dalton in the Once Upon a Time in, Mex- in Hollywood <laughs> yeah. when he gets confronted with the, um, the great escape story. Yeah. Like, yeah. You almost got the role, yeah, and he yeah. keeps having to tell the story. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, you just, you just, you just see people's face, like, like, why are you doing this? Like, just, just, just be. Yeah. Let me be happy for you. And it's right. like, okay. Um, so anyway, yeah, I, I uh, switched that union, and that, that, you know, was big. And so, I, I, I since then, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm union. Oh, that's so great. That means less uh, things come o- across my desk. Yeah, but they're better. Right. You know, but yeah. But into filling the gaps, I've been getting more into uh, uh, actually writing. Uh, oh, nice! Yeah, for the for the ads. So that that I think is what uh, like uh, right the copy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, a little more like and you're, that, like you're I, a madman now. I'm a little bit of a madman. Yeah, I, I am. A mad man. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a touch mad. I, yeah, yeah. You know, I'll, I'll have a. I'll have a bourbon and soda at, at one p.m. Yeah, and why let's do not? It. Throw yeah. an oyster on That's my what's plate. In your cup. Yeah, let's see what. Yeah, I, yeah, bourbon and oysters. It's right. like a little weird cocktail, man. Um, yeah, and that happened organically through you know just doing uh, doing spot. I mean, in auditioning, you you see so many scripts, right? Yeah. I mean, you read them, and and the same same thing. I'm like, I'm reading these scripts. I'm like. I could write these scripts. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I could write this script. You right. know? Are you riffing stuff better sometimes? You're like, I should probably say it like this. I riff a lot. Yeah. And that's most of the stuff I've gotten is through, through riffing, you know? And and so much so in Boost, like, I riffed so much, and they were relying on me riffing, essentially. Yeah. I mean, it came to the point the director was playing, like, Grant, make this funny, you know? Right. And now I'm practically a writer. And, and I, I was a little resentful at the time. I'm like, well, I'm not being paid to be a writer. But, you know, but it made me at least feel like, well, maybe I should be paid to be a writer. Yeah. Or maybe I could be. And they actually did end up hiring me as a freelance copywriter for that. Oh, that's for that great. Campaign, a little bit. So I'm just so a little bit. You're flipping a union. You're getting hired. You're, you basically own Boost Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not anymore. They went yeah. back the other way. Well, actually, Dish Network bought them. So Dish owns Boost. Network. Yeah. yeah. They still exist. Like, I have a burner Boost phone. Hmm. Okay. I don't know what kind of, um, you know, shady shit you're into, man. Yeah. Uh, you know what it is? Is I turn off my phone during the day mm-hmm. and i forward my calls to it and it's just a flip phone and then i don't have to check instagram or if it, someone needs to call me they call me and that's Interesting. it oh so it's like a, so i can write it's like and, a and do those self, things uh yeah it's, it's like, like a limiter so mm-hmm. i'm like because if it's nearby you're like uh or you, look at it again right there it goes um yeah things alert alert hey you're missing you're missing and out FOMO, you? FOMO. oh big time that's great. Yeah, it's great. I had a I, uh, my my first roommate in L.A. did that, um, except he didn't do it as intelligently. He just got rid of his smartphone, so oh. he just had a flip phone. And then I'm like, well, how are you gonna like even know what's going on? And he's like, magazines. <laughs> and he just ordered like a thousand magazines and like weeklies, you know, like with New Yorker and stuff like that. And then he went away for like three months to New York. And then our our. <laughs> Our, our like common hilarious. area was just a fucking dentist's office. Yeah, yeah. He's never read any. I'm like, you're never gonna read these. And he never did. It was such yeah. A you can use that. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. It was a nightmare and a, and a fire hazard. Right. Yeah. On top of everything. So, um, but I'm glad that works for you. Yeah. It is. That's. I mean, the dream is. I would love to be a magazine guy. Yeah. I was uh, analog, like paper analog. Uh-huh. I was paper newspaper guy. Okay. Up until the pandemic, when I'm like, I don't want people throwing things. That's fun. Here anymore. Your newspaper but guy. he'd always throw it under, underneath my car. You can fold it and stuff. You're okay with You can handle it. <sighs> I can't handle I still can't handle a newspaper. The folding is kind of annoying. Yeah. Like when it gets unfolded, it yeah. takes up a lot. You need a lot of real estate yeah. to be a but newspaper But you feel important. Guy. The more real estate you're taking, you're like, I'm important. This and when is- you, the thing is when you fall behind on newspapers is the problem. Because you're like, okay, I didn't read yesterday's and now today's is here. And, it's and like- what do you do? But with the internet, you're like, oh, I missed yesterday. Who cares? Right. So it's a long gone down yeah. the feed. They're not doing cliffhangers in the newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I was like pretty into it. Like I used to have the Wall Street Journal, Financial Times, LA Times, and New York Times. Oh, that's fun. And uh, it was a lot of reading. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. That's that's cool. That's but it's like- it's good. You get a different perspectives. Sure. And 
I, I would do it for like investing as well. And it's nice like not to have like, I mean, no matter what your settings are, you're, everything's going through an algorithm this day, these days. So you're only seeing what you've already liked before. That's like, the problem. You never know. You yeah, know, yeah. like, yeah, I, I can't help. I, I was, you know, when Trump was president, it was, there was so much clickbait around that, that I clicked on it a lot. And now my Apple news is just about Trump. And I'm like, this isn't what I wanted. Yeah, sure. It's not, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it, that's why evil. Cause so even if I go to the website for the newspaper, mm -hmm. I go and say, what's today, give me the copy of today's paper. Cause otherwise it's too much. Mm -hmm. Like this whole clicking, click more, click more life right. is it's, to, there's a new articles about it. Like people are talking about it now. That sounds kind of Trump. People, People are, talking. are talking about this. No, but like I just saw something on, I think it was on Bill Maher. This guy was on talking about how like this clicking stuff is just too much and it's mm -hmm. ruining our brains and our relationships. Yeah. And, and it's just reinforcing already trodden pathways in yeah. your brain. And the whole idea is to make new ones. You know? And it was like uh, they talk, uh, they chat too much. Mm -hmm. Like, the, or sorry, engagement is what the algorithm looks for. Right. Which means... And we see this with stand-up clips and like uh, podcast clips. It's like, you'll never guess what so-and-so said about who's the biggest celebrity, uh, Caitlyn Jenner. And they were not even really mentioned in the pod. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, click, 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 click. Right, and right, then right. that's the, and I can't bring myself to do that with this podcast. Good. I don't know why. I just like, I don't care. I'm not oh, going to go. for you. Yeah. I've always struggled with, with that, like, you know, being in commercials and stuff, it's like, oh, am I, am I like a sellout or like, is this like, you know, cause you get in the, I mean, I, I never went into the working world like i started like out of college i yeah i sort of pursued stand-up comedy you know mm -hmm. and then my working world was just like bartending and, and, and waiting tables but um so yeah for me it was like oh is this like you know there was a little bit of that kind of sellout thing but then i realized like you're always work everything is advertising i mean you're you're, you're you're no matter what you're doing you're working for a major corporation yeah. I and mean, your goal is to get sponsors on anything and they're the ones that pay for all the things that you do yeah yeah, yeah. you know like either any way you slice it you're right. working for a company you you're know? working for an advertising in some capacity in some sure. capacity yeah yeah so cut out the middleman and work from directly because that's where the money is you yeah know? That, that makes a lot of sense because then yeah. you're like uh and then in some ways it could be more creative because you're yeah. like i'm making the the art part of the commercial yeah. directly. Yeah. I'm not doing something else right. brought to you by MeUndies or whatever. Exactly. Or even in the commercial, it's like, oh, that's a funny riff. Maybe we'll use it. It's like, well, why don't you just pay me to write the, the, from the beginning? Yeah. And uh, it, it'll be good from the jump, you know? So it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't, uh, do you have like regular TV? Is, I guess you could what expense you it. Like, do you have like direct TV or something where no. you see commercials? No. No. Okay. Yeah. No. No, I don't. I, I haven't even seen my commercial that's running right now. The only commercials I catch now are on uh, Hulu because yeah. I just have the regular I, sub. Uh, even that, I pay for the non. -cash. You pay for the non? Yeah. Well, see, with Verizon, I get like it for free, oh, okay. and they just give me the free one, but not mm -hmm. uh, with commercials. And I don't watch enough TV for it to, yeah. to cut out the commercials. Cool. So you're not supporting your own endeavors. They are doing okay. That's the thing. You don't yeah. need to, you know, you really, you don't, they're, they've got the money. And I think that's something that I think coming from like never having really worked and also as a comic, you're working for free so much. Like it was like kind of hard to like, be like, just to stand up for yourself and be like, I'm, I, hey, you know, I know you guys have the money. Like, yeah, you yeah. know, there is a little party that's like, Ooh, but it's like, no, you guys have all the money. You know, that's a thing I've been working on recently with mm -hmm. myself is like trying to be more assertive for stuff just in general, not mm -hmm. being like, Ugh, just being yeah. like, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is what we're doing. Let's yeah. like, go. Uh, like there's too much of this, like scared to act after you, sir, after you, sir. Yeah. But it's also cause we're doing in, in comedy more so than like, I would say the other entertainment arts, mm -hmm. we have to be kind of all things. We're kind of like, we book ourselves. We're right. kind of like, we're like a, the business and the creative. And so it's like, you walk this path of not being able to fully assert yourself for your artistic self. Right. And it gets awkward. It's hard, you know? Yeah. And I think it's even hard. It's even challenging getting into the uh, the creative side of ads because you still are saying that you're going to be able to create something. You know, yeah. you still are saying you're going to pay me X amount for something that I'm going to deliver. And that thing is a creative thing. So you don't know what that is when you're saying that, yeah. you know, so you really kind of have to just kind of put a bet on yourself saying like, well, I've been creative in the past and hopefully it'll show up. And that is scary, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because then you're like, you go home and it's a blank page. Right. Exactly. And you're and like, okay. you actually have to deliver and, and but you have to like 
kind of front your own yeah, like, yeah you have to front like the work that you haven't done yet like you like oh it's gonna be great yeah, yeah. it is great work but you don't know you really don't know but so it's and scary. sometimes you're selling like they have an idea right. which you may or may not think is good right it doesn't matter and you have to make it cool whatever they're right. saying is cool now because right. you're here yeah and so you have to take that home and be like all right <sighs> pandas and penguins how do we do it oh yeah forget yeah. it i mean um, and but that's a challenge. That's a solve. You know, I, I like uh, I, I'm one that I like trying to get out of tough situations creatively. You know, I, I prefer some limitations. You know, the, the truly blank page is is terrifying. I, yeah. I'd much rather edit or like take something shitty and make it better. Or yeah, or even take something that doesn't seem like, oh, this can't be funny. But it's like, well, probably can. Maybe. Yeah. No, you know? deadlines are so important. Like today yeah. I had a deadline. I was like, okay, I, I got to review it and punch it up and turn it in before noon. There you go. I'm like done. And if I didn't have a deadline, I probably would have put Forget it off. It. I never, yeah, I, I can't. I really wish. And it's so stupid because it is a trick. I mean, you know, and you know you're tricking They're yourself. They're mental tricks. Yeah. You know you're tricking yourself. I mean, there's no, yeah, yet. Um, it works. Totally. And yeah, I try to use those for like uh, meditation and working out. Mm -hmm. Just like little uh, slotting times and just forcing deadlines otherwise yeah. it's three o'clock you're like i haven't meditated i haven't worked out yeah i ate like shit and i haven't done my writing you're like oh no the whole day is gone mm -hmm. and I everything we do is compound interest mm -hmm. it's like we do a little bit of writing every day and all of a sudden you have five more minutes right if you don't do it you're like oh why am i doing the same old jokes mm -hmm. oh because i didn't write exactly or try them yeah um one thing that's really helped me out is the uh the pomodoro method i don't know if you're no what's that you're familiar with that um it's really simple, and it's a stupid name because it comes from a guy who was Italian who made it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it I after, hope so. He named it yeah, after yeah. tomato. Otherwise, it's appropriation. Yeah, but it's the idea is that you uh, you set a certain amount of time, and like the standard Pomodoro, and the one I use is 25 minutes a block of time. Mm -hmm. And you say that is going to be intense focus. Like, I'm not going to do anything other than what, what, whatever the task is like not look at my phone like yeah, yeah and like so you literally set a timer and i i have it so it's i, I have the clock and i can yeah, see it. not alexa not alexa yeah. yeah no i have like a it's on my task bar like the yeah, timer yeah. and then after 25 minutes you take a five minute break okay um and that five minutes you can do whatever the hell you want and then uh that's one pomodoro like the the 25 plus the break is one pomodoro you do four pomodoros okay so 25 <laughs> and five and then you take half an hour okay take then you take half an hour break um, and that's it, you know, that's, it, I mean, I love it. I it, like it seems so simple, but it, it, it honestly, cause it's like, it helps you for slogging through shit that you don't want to yeah, do yeah. because it's like 25 minutes. Isn't that intimidating an amount right. of time. It's sort of like, I can, I can, I can kind of do anything for yeah. 25 minutes. Right. You know? And it's like, if you can't, okay. If you can't do three hours, uh, how much can you do? Right. Right. And yeah, 25 minutes is a good chunk. And and the more you use it, the more you realize how much you can get done in a certain amount of Pomodoros. And then you can start estimating how many you'll need for I just like the way tasks. you use Pomodoros in a sentence. How yeah. many Pomodoros? It, is it, that's, it, it is, sounds like something they teach my kids in toddler <laughs> yeah, I school. I know. I know. And that, but, it, but that's Daddy, your I brain. Daddy, I did four Pomodoros today. <laughs> oh, that's great. We're what do you want for dinner? We're, we're not any smarter than those kids. I mean, nothing grows, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just as stupid. Our brains have that element that's just as undeveloped. And it and it needs that yeah. you know and you can check them off you know you can have your you know say like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna devote 12 pomodoros to this and we'll see where i'm at at that point and it's yeah, usually yeah. pretty amazing i'm amazed how much like the time to the work is and and, and it's really great for like if i don't want to do the work if i have work i don't want to do it makes me focus on the time right because if you focus on the work I'm going to get miserable very quickly. I'm imagining me not doing this work and hating it and all that. Yeah, but if yeah. I just imagine the time and I just say, okay, it's not work, it's time. It's 25 minutes. Yeah. You know, that that helps me through it. Are the Pomodoros, like, do you just keep track of them? Like, mm -hmm. do you collect them? Mm -hmm. I keep track of them. I have a spreadsheet with just check boxes. I mean, you can use any any method you want. Okay. But yeah. I, I, but the timer I use is set to be Pomodoro method timer. I mean, it's free. It's like on the app store. Oh, so they have an app for this timer. Oh, they have many, millions of oh, Pomodoro so th apps. This is famous. Yeah, it's not me. I'm, okay. I'm, it's not an Italian guy in my head. All right. It's a, <laughs> well, it's a, real, it's a real guy. I'm, yeah. I just wasn't sure how big this is. No, absolutely. This is like huge. There, I mean, I would say, I don't know how huge it is, but it's yeah. definitely, there's multiple, they have an app, it's multiple pretty big. apps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And one is right on the taskbar. It counts four Pomodoros and, and counts your break. Yeah. And then gives you a half an hour after four. 
And it's four four twenty five minutes. Four twenty five minutes with five minutes in between. After four, you do ha- you get half an hour. What do you do in the five minutes? I really try to not look at my phone. I mean, it's like because it goes so quickly. If you get into a, a your feed, yeah, you, you're gonna blow your five minutes so quick. And it also, right. but it also that's also what's good about it. it makes you kind of cherish the five minutes. Right. So I really, really just try to forget whatever the hell I was working on. Yeah. I can be in mid sentence, and I just try to flush it out of my brain and like forget. Whatever I was working on, however much I have left, none of it. Yeah. You're like, this show looks cool. Who books it? Oh, shit. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, I know. No, I don't do How'd that. they get the, oh, okay. No. Yeah, once you get there and it's like, bing, and it's like, oh, shit. Now I just got to, now I feel like, a, like I feel like shit and I have to work. So that's not a good situation. Yeah, I'm going to get the Pomodoro thing for sure. I wonder if this, how does this Pomodoro, Mr. Pomodoro or Mrs. Pomodoro or <laughs> they Pomodoro make money? I don't know. He's dead. Oh, he's dead? Yeah, I think he's dead. Huh. I think he was like a I think he was like a scientist of some kind. So I think he had a day job. I don't think he was like trying to go in town to town like okay. it was in a like a snake oil salesman. Maybe it's like Tesla, like the Tesla comp the guy is dead, but they make cars. So maybe Pomodoro's dead, mm-hmm. but they own the name or something and they're just making <sighs> listen, I know it's the business podcast, but I don't think anyone's making money off of this thing. No. I really don't. I mean maybe that's an opportunity, you know, but I think it's public domain. Do you know Tim Ferris? Not personally. But you know of him. Yeah. So he had one. He, I think he invented one or invested in mm-hmm. one because he was promoting it. It was similar. It's like you go in your thing and then it, you press a button in your taskbar and then it mutes stuff on your desktop and gives you a timer. Okay. So there must be some sort of money in this. Well, I think there could be certainly. Advertising. <laughs> Is there any advertising in the Pomodoro app? Uh, no. Nothing. There should be. Is that what this podcast is? You just try to monetize every element of life? Yeah? Yeah, except the podcast. (laughs) Okay. Okay. I see. Um, Yeah, like that that would be great. Yeah. I I mean, if there were, yeah, if if you had it automated to like mute your do not disturb and really like really, you know, maybe tell, you know, tell your roommate to shut up and who knows how many things, how deep you could get. Right. Yeah. It is something I need to do with the podcast. If we double from where we are now, listener-wise, I think we'll be in a good place for advertising, which will be great. Great. Yeah. Well, I hope it happens. Yeah. It's like, it's been this thing where it's just been growing every month. Great. But we haven't hit, I think the topic is a little, um, it's not as wide-reaching as like a uh, lifestyle podcast or certain ones. Yeah, sure. And... um, but I think, I, think I, I don't know, I think everybody ends up here in show business. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you start with the show. Yeah. And then you, the business uh, comes along. Right. It's kind of like a lot of the business models today, Facebook, everything. It's like, we're going to make this great thing and then we'll figure out how to monetize it later. Right. And I feel like something happened in this last year where podcasting has kind of changed. I don't know if you feel the same way, but like I stopped listening to as many podcasts. Mm. I started getting d- kind of more interested in more produced ones. Mm-hmm. And since there's so many out there, like mm-hmm. I feel like people's tastes are changing a bit and the, the proliferation of pods on youtube like once i went to video it became a whole different thing right that's interesting yeah i i but i've never been much of a i mean i'm more of an audiobook guy for that very reason i wanted someone to have edited their thing or like really tried to yeah yeah you know write something or condense it and you know i usually i don't listen to like fiction on audio i read fiction but i i I listen to you know interesting biographies or even like self-helpy type of things yeah, on yeah, an yeah. audiobook yeah. yeah yeah i like that too i've just started getting into fiction more i was never a fiction guy oh cool and i love it what are you reading in fiction i'm reading uh charlie kaufman's book um the the director the guy who wrote eternal sunshine oh, okay. and being john malkovich he wrote a novel called ant kind and it's like this friggin' thick but it's 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 amazing it's hilarious wow that sounds great it's ant kind oh. it's from outer space man i mean it's like it's exactly what you'd think the guy who wrote those movies would would in a novel but he's a great novelist i mean there's no nothing lost in his uh his writing ability at all it's not like oh he's a screenwriter so maybe he can't work in a novel it's like he's even funnier in a yeah novel. yeah yeah i'm reading uh larry mcmurtry's all my friends will be strangers i don't know it it's uh, it's about this writer in Texas who mm-hmm. like his his kind of journey from Texas to L.A. Okay, and like all those things that happened in the '70s is cool. very. It's so I'm halfway through. It's like very screenwriter good. or he's a novelist. Okay, and cool. then he uh, sells his novel, his first novel while mm-hmm. he's in college, drops out of college, and then uh, also this guy in L.A. buys a screenplay, and he's kind of it's a little um, Holdeny. Okay. 
but uh, it's very good. Great. Yeah, yeah. The character, I, the character has a lot of similarities to me. Is like he's kind of like aloof, kind of distant. Okay. Kind of like doesn't trust everyone, but uh, okay. It's very good. I'm not doing it justice, but I highly recommend it. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah I'll check it out. Yeah. Um, like who are like some of your all times? Like, um, I mean, I love. Uh, let's see, let's look at my oh, book yeah, look at you. Yeah, you look at like I just got into reading, and it's like, well, you no, really no, just, spent a I, lot of money. See, that's the thing. I started reading a lot. I've read a lot of business and nonfiction. So fic- fiction, I think. Honestly, I mean, Hemingway is one of them for yeah. sure. Um, I like the Richard Stark and like the Hunter, the kind of like private eye, like noir. Uh, Eve Babbitt's that's really good. The Slow Days and Fast Company. Um, yeah, I find that like fiction. Joan Didion. F- oh yeah, yeah. I'm a big Vonnegut guy. I don't know Vonnegut. Yeah, you should read some Vonnegut, dude. Dude, I'm just I'm not. Uh, only, I don't yeah, need to make yeah. notes because I'm gonna edit this later and not I'll write them all down. Not only should you read some Vonnegut, like I need some he, Vonnegut. Like no. yes, you need it, and also like you should YouTube and like some of his like college speeches and stuff that he gave are like so awesome. Like yeah. they're like not only they're because he he's very funny. Um, he's like he's super accessible, but also extremely smart in like what he's saying. Yeah. Um, but he says it very plainly. And um, he has this thing about like the shapes of stories, and it's like it's it's useful for anyone who's in honestly in show business in the business of storytelling. You yeah. Know? Uh, like he he draws them like their waveforms, and 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 then compares them, and it's it's unbelievable. Oh, like the progression of like. Uh huh. Man falls in a hole. You know, man starts low, goes high, gets low again. Yeah, man yeah. starts high, goes low, gets high. Everyone loves that one. And then he like kind of he kind of plots out. Um, Hamlet, okay, and then it's like uh, good thing, bad thing, good thing, bad thing, bad thing, good thing, good thing, bad thing, bad thing, and then like if you look at it, it's not clear. It's like all over the place, and he's like, and that's why it's great, because that's life. Oh, interesting. Because because that's why it's a great work of art because that right. actually mimics life. You don't know. It's, it's not a straight line, and it's ambiguous. Yeah. yeah and yeah. and whether it's good or bad is ambiguous. You you it's up to you whether yeah. it's good or bad. It, it's not. There's no clear author saying it's a happy ending. Right. It's a good thing that happened. You know. That's why I like movies better than TV because mm-hmm. movies are more ambiguous. It's like, what right. do you think happened? Yeah. And where TV is like, it's very like a writer's medium. It's like sure. we are going to tell you over twelve seasons <laughs> and. 400 yeah. episodes unless it's, exactly unless it's lost because then you're just going to be like okay right i actually never wa- watched gonna, lost. i love it but no, I, I, heard, I heard the drama i say I heard this the drama. i say this with love <laughs> but you absolutely do have to be like there's just going to be a lot of unanswered questions and that's okay it's been a fun ride yeah, yeah. it's about the journey not the destination with that i one. watched like the pilot i think where yeah. they landed and the uh-huh. guy gets sucked in the jet engine uh-huh. and then i just never went forward but um yeah, like movies. I actually started reading a lot of Tarantino's screenplays. Oh, that's interesting. And then watching the film and saying like, oh, like it's interesting because like in the they they published all his screenplays, mm-hmm. and they're like the actual final screenplay before they shot. It seems like because right. their sections are like, oh, this section was not in the movie. Hmm. You're like, oh, you kind of kind of see like, oh, why they cut it out and like, oh, it does work with this gone and stuff like that. So having that comparison like pretty much available to anyone is very yeah, interesting. it's really cool. Yeah, 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 and. uh that's just taking me down a deep dive of learning more about directors. So I'll definitely check out that book yeah. written by the Eternal Sunshine guy. Oh, uh, yeah. Charlie Kaufman. I mean, he's directed some great stuff, too. Yeah. Yeah. Is Novelist in your future? No. Because there was a little so. twinkle in your eye when you started talking oh, about Oh, I admire them. Yeah. I appreciate them. But I don't have the patience. I think I'm too much of a, like, I need, like, a... And it's something I'm not hap- proud of, but I, I think I need like someone to give me like a pat on the back too quickly for like anything creative that yeah. I do, like you stand know? up, like stand up, right? Yeah. I thought of this funny thing today and tonight, I get to be on stage and try. It. Even with writing these commercials, it's like they're all so short, you know. I mean, I have to crank out a lot of them, so it's sort of like, yeah, I, mean, I work better in short form. But you know, how could you go for years not knowing if it's good? It you is know? daunting. Like, yeah, nobody, you know, I mean, telling you or like you just, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's. Yeah, like my next writing uh, project is finishing a screenplay. And mm-hmm. the, uh, the things I've done so far are all episodic TV. And so you're like, you're finished at like around 30 pages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now we're doing 130 pages. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's a, it's a multi-month yeah. draw. Yeah. And that's like. A drop in the bucket compared to an, any novel, you know. That's like, oh yeah, novel like three years, like three years, and like not only just like the amount of story, the amount. You're of a character. different person. COVID has uh, happened. And COVID, <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I was actually reading um, Steinbeck, who's a, who's a favorite. He he wrote a, a journal as he was writing East of Eden. Every day before he wrote East of Eden, he would write an entry in this journal, and you can buy the journal. 
and I was just reading it, and it's just so crazy, like the the, the mind space, the head space of of writing something and a work of that proportion is absolutely mind boggling. I can't imagine. And he he's written like literary classics. Yeah, I mean, East of Eden was what I mean. It was absolutely that's on my list of ones. And I he like read sensed soon. it. He's like, yeah. I feel like this could be the book, but I need to just keep. Um, you know, grounded and like, you know, I, I think I invented an entire language for this book and I threw it out and then I re and then I've made it really plain and I wanted to really surprise people with its plainness and yeah, all yeah. this. Like, so it's just to hear that all of it was intentional and, and, and how, how much goes into it. It's right. mind-boggling. And fair, you like Hemingway? Yeah, sure. Of course. Like Farewell to Arms. Sure. When I read that, I was like, oh my God, this is yeah, I mean, just following that story and like how you could tell how personal it was. Mm -hmm. He was really like leaving himself on the page. And but the simplicity with which he simplicity. executed it, you know. Yeah, I love the, his language. Simplicity is complexity resolved, right? Oh, very good. Yeah, it's true. I mean, yeah, I didn't, I didn't say it, but who said it? I don't know, some guy, some guy, yeah, or a girl, yeah. I don't know. Some person. Oh, How do you write on uh, on paper or in a typewriter? No, or? I, you know, I, I I was doing paper for a while. I was in the more. I'm I'm still doing morning pages every day. Okay, yeah. Um, a lot of people do that. Yeah, I started doing it for a while. It's it's helpful. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's great. Uh, I've been doing it for a number of years now, actually. And I started on paper, but it's like, I don't know. I'm back to paper. I'm like trying to analog my life as much as possible. It's a little bit, the paper. Once the papers get big. It's like not big. Like once you get a stack of like your writings, especially for like a script or something, you're like, okay, this is like unmanageable now. <laughs> yeah. How am I gonna? How and do I, I search it? <laughs> search it. You know, it's like I gotta fucking yeah, forget it. I don't. I don't have a. I don't have a perfect system either. I've, I've experimented with a lot of things. I uh, the morning pages I've gotten down because there's actually a website called 750words.com. Okay. And some some San Francisco tech guy figured out that that's you know you're supposed to write three pages of morning pages three. Leads legal pad pages yeah and that's about 750 words so this thing just like literally counts down your words saves it in a database and then you can uh the great thing about it what i love about it is you can put like metadata like so if you if it's like for example if i'm writing my morning pages and i have a bit idea oh. that's something that could be a bit i just put like bit in capital with uh, a colon and then whatever i write after that until i hit the next space or the next paragraph this guy's break, figured it out so then I can just like, I've got a year and I can just click on bit and I've got every single day that I wrote a bit hashtag, essentially hashtagging my own stuff. Oh. Yeah. And that's just for morning pages. That's but, great. But that is great. Someone started doing that for podcasts where they could like transcribe it. And then if like something in the news happens mm -hmm. around this person, then you can search all your pods and be like, do I have anything on this person? That's huge. And clip it and then put it out. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, I've got a bin of legal pads from my morning pages. That's like, I'm never going to go through those. And I'm not the type of guy that does. Like, I want to be that guy that's like, yeah. I'm going to pour through everything I've done. I never do. I, I, I See, really, I'm not a rear view mirror guy. I was, I'm, I was a tech guy. I embraced mm -hmm. it all. And now I feel like I've lost it. Something happened like with the last like few <laughs> uh, iterations of the iphone and computers and stuff i'm just like i can't deal with this anymore it's right. too much it is so now i'm trying to figure out like what balance of like morning pages analog writing and all these things so you're going are. all the way you're going all the way analog so i'm going all the way i got a flip phone i got the i'm gonna go get papers again right Ch churning the butter and yeah, churning, all that. Oh, yeah. milk yeah thank milk you is for part this. of the analog yeah, I, I saw the cow on the my cow. way in yeah uh you know yeah so. yeah so it's it there's a there's a change happening, so okay. I'll, I'll I'll keep you updated with I it. I mean, please do. I mean, I I, I had a similar process. So, yeah. but do you uh, are you because you started stand up in New York? Mm -hmm. Are you happy with your LA life? I mean, I'm happy with my LA life. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say my necessarily my stand up situation. Oh, it's life. hard to argue that that's superior. Yeah. But I'm very happy with my LA life. Yeah, you don't miss the the travel and um, the city and the... I mean I I mean but I visit and then yeah. I, I get a taste of it. I mean I was there for like eleven years. I Oh wow. Yeah, I I experienced it and in my twenties, which is when you wanna be I was there, there in my twenties too. Yeah, yeah I yeah. mean it's like you get to an age where it's like it really was just about like I don't wanna fight to do everything. Like yeah, I yeah. like Trader Joe's is a straight up like SWAT team level a coordination event. I, I just can't do this, you know. I need less resistance to just the day to day. Yeah. You know? I, I was there in July. Have you gone back since pandemic? Yes, I was there in June, actually. Oh, so not too far from then. Mm -hmm. uh, did you feel it was different? Because I certainly did. I was like, it's not back. Something is off. No, I mean, it was it was a weird blend of like people partying in the streets and like COVID is over celebration. Plus like weird. It was weirdly 
packed and also a ghost town. So yeah, exactly. That's I don't know I, how like, to describe that. I stayed near Chelsea, and mm-hmm. then uh, I walked two blocks or three blocks down to the West Village, packed. Packed. And I walk up uh, to my uh, hotel, and I was like, empty. Empty. Yeah, we stayed in like Midtown randomly, and it was like empty. Yeah, empty. I couldn't believe it, and it was like it felt dangerous because you're like, there, it was. It was. There's more... a certain safety of everyone around, sure. and when it's empty, you're like, it, uh, you're like, what's happening? Mm-hmm. It's, it's... But the shows are still great. There oh, were still so many amazing hands shows, down, and stand up wise, I think I had the, the best, best week of my life to be a of stand up in the world, hands down. Like if you, if you stand up is you know your pursuit, if that's what you want, your artistic nurturing bosom, then that's where you could need to be. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I, I don't, I don't argue that. Is your focus still like stand up first? Um, I don't know. I don't. I think it's equal. I think. Yeah. I think. I'm. I think what I have now is an ecosystem. You know, and and I think I kind of uh, keep everything kind of fresh, and I keep kind of growing in every direction at the same time. And I know that might not that might not go with a lot of conventional wisdom about you know getting great at right. one thing and like here's who's here's who grant gordon is yeah, yeah. i got two <laughs> seconds for who grant right, gordon right, right. is and you better Tell have me. it yeah but um that's not how i live my life so that's it and it's, it's so far i've i've never missed a meal and um and and uh you know but you're are, living off the art which I'm, is of primary I mean, importance well i'm living off my writing i'm living off my brain yeah you know what I mean? And, and as for someone who, like, if I needed to generate money, it was always, like, get another bartending job or whatever. And for me, it's like, okay, it's like my mind is paying me now. Um, yeah. And so that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything, like, uh, you would add or take away that would make your life better? Man, I mean, in what capacity, though? And what do you say better? What do you mean? How do you mean better? Like, in term- is there something you could eliminate from We'll do elimination one first. Like, I eliminated caffeine. Oh, okay. And I feel better. And it made my life better. But it could also be, like, I could eliminate, like, worrying about booking gigs. I could eliminate, like, mm. um, different things. Because I, some- I feel like our culture is so much like, add more, do more, mm. do this. And so- sometimes if you pull something out, mm. you kind of get, like, a better experience. Have you ever uh, pulled something out and had a improvement in your lifestyle i think i yeah um i stopped actually i stopped masturbating for a long time yeah yeah for uh, over two years yeah and that helped yeah um i kept you was it like costanza were you like focused again i wish i wish um but no it definitely like kept me um more conscious and 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 more like uh and also made me better, I think, a, a better lover with my now fiance. Oh, congratulations. Um, thank you very much. Yeah. And um, I, I was like, why am I... Here's, here's, what, I, here's what I would say about it. I, I'm a big uh, Carl Jung guy. Yeah, I love um, Carl Jung. Big Jungian. Yeah. And, um, you know, he, he was obviously the... He inherited the Freud situation. But yep. um, Freud was all about sex, everything sexual libido. And Jung, and as you know, I'm just... But he, he expanded that libido to be a general term for just life energy that mm-hmm. you have. And you have a fine... You have an amount of life libido. And um, I found that if I didn't, like, ground that libido sexually... It, like, it's almost like... It was just like, why am I, like pouring out that libido that could use into any other aspect of my life right into uh you know just a, a, a tuesday night on Pornhub or what have you yeah, like yeah, this yeah. doesn't seem like they're, they're just they're, this energy could just has to if, as long as it's if it stays in me i feel like it'll end up in a better place and then that's not always necessarily true but that's how i feel yeah no that makes a lot of sense because it is there is a certain life force to it all yeah and it's also oh, it's another screen and another addiction right and uh, I have a lot of friends who have quit as well, and it's also been great for them. Yeah, so, yeah. I, and I feel like our part of our culture is a little too like porny in general. Oh, I find. Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, it's 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 a tough scenario. I don't blame anyone. You've got yeah. you, anything you want to see at any time. I mean, you, you you transport somebody from the the Babylonian era to to this, and that's all they would be doing. The second you introduce them to the porn machine, yeah, that's it. Like but that's the problem. I know it's too. I don't know. I I feel like an old guy complaining about these types. My phone, this, that, right. the internet. But it's also like. I feel like the next generation is going to figure it out either because yeah. they'll grow up with it and be like, what do you mean? I have automatic balance because I had it my whole life. Like I, I, I was in college without it. Right. Without like, you yeah, know, me too. I'm in that. I straddled. I remember time before internet. Yeah. Like exactly. I'm like just like the first year of millennials ish. Mm-hmm. So it's like, 
I feel like a little bit of both generations right. and I, and I'm honestly glad I got to experience it yeah, me without too. like, you know, I lived in New York in my twenties without a smartphone. Mm-hmm. I just, it was just Blackberry time. I was like, okay. I just got my first Blackberry. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. Blackberry didn't feel so, it was like, okay, you have emails, like yeah. who cares? And then uh, now with the new thing, it's just, it's just different. Yeah. But my hope is that the next generation, since they grew up from the beginning, it won't be a negative. It'll be a positive. They'll be totally. like, what do you mean? It's just like a balance. Well, it's sort of like it reminds me of like how like binge drinking is such a huge problem in America. Yet in Europe, there you can get beer in a vending machine and they don't care. That's exactly a be- example. And, and, and yeah. they have so much less abuse of it because right. it's like it's not forbidden. It's not na- it's not naughty and it's just available. Yeah. And, and then you end up using what you want to. I love that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You took what I said and made it into a nice, perfect wow. allegory. That's what they pay me for sometimes. Hey, you know? commercial. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What are your goals for this next year? Uh, you know, I'm not like a huge, uh, like, like that type of goal setter per se. Uh, I am getting married. So that, that's a goal. That, that would be the goal. Yeah. The goal would be to afford that. Yeah. Still be able to, uh, uh, and then uh, continue to afford life after that. I feel like I'm in a place right now thankfully that um i can start building the foundation of, of, of like a life i mean you're i mean you're, you you have a nice house here and everything you've already you've done i've already you've, like i did, you've done i did that. everything in a weird order yeah so, you yeah. kind of did it backwards right or i did a lot of things out of order actually but, you did it in the right order technically i would say i mean like you, the midwestern order right you've got yeah. you got your house together yeah and then you ventured out from your house to to do whatever that is that you i just start i started weird i started college then art then college then art mm-hmm. then i just i i was i was the zigzag guy right like, like you're story from earlier right. so i didn't like do it in the specific order but i think that's overrated anyway yeah absolutely you know? i agree and you know yeah so this is where i'm at where it's like i'm coming around and it's like yeah i'm in this sort of like building a foundation of a life together uh, uh part i feel yeah. like uh you know right now so. i love that it's beautiful and sweet thank you yeah thank well, where you. can people find you on the internet oh boy after can... we b- spent 45 minutes bashing it yeah right I rarely post these days, okay. but uh, I I do I, I am active on Twitter with uh, with with joke uh, remnants. Uh, yeah, go Grant Gordon. You can find me across the board. Go Grant Gordon. Everything. Follow him. He's super funny. Catch him at a live show. Do you post the pizza bit? Is that available or is that not? Uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's up there on one of my. Check uh, out the pizza bit. It's check amazing. Check out the pizza bit. And uh, hope to see you soon. Hey, thanks, Latif. Thanks Appreciate a lot. it, man. A lot of Bye. fun.